Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here today is Team 7842, the Brown Coats. They were the Inspire winner and Finals Alliance captain at one of their state championships and just have one of the most unique intakes I've seen this season with an absolutely fantastic active intake and so much more going on with this robot. I'm really excited to jump right into this. So coming up on First Updates Now, this is Team 7842, the Brown Coats. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Okay guys, let's start with your intake. As we mentioned before, it's an active intake. There's so much going on here, so let's just start with an overview. So during a match, our intake drops down and then we run it coaxial to intake a cone with these wheels. It then will fold back and it deposits onto our middleman quickly and reliably. Yeah, and so I want to talk a little bit about the iterations you guys have had with this throughout the season. Was it was this your first design? Have you just stuck with this the whole way through or were there like major upgrades you made and like what did you learn along the way? One of our first ideas was to use a rubber band combine, but we didn't like the idea of having to swap out rubber bands every single match. So we went with these compliant wheels so that we don't have to change every match. And we recently changed the gear ratio running them from two to one to one to one. Mm -hmm. So now they run at approximately 1100 RPM. Yeah, and so 1100 RPM, that means you're probably running a motor uh, yep. for driving that. Okay, yeah, so that's fantastic. And have you had that motor system for the entire season or have you played around with servos or any other actuator style? Uh, we've used a motor for the actual wheels the whole time, mm -hmm. but for the wrist here, we used to have a some servo but it didn't have enough power so we swapped to a motor and then we swapped to an axon servo and it's been great since then yeah awesome and so i want to talk a little bit about the programming and sensors you guys use in your intake do you have anything to automatically detect when a cone's all the way in or you know transfer things like that walk me through it so for our intake we use stall amperage to detect when the cone is actually in there because it's much faster than the i2c port we used to have a limit switch, but we decided we decided to switch to the stall and bridge because of the cycle time. And for our middleman or our transfer system, we have a color sensor back here, and that allows us to reliably know when the cone is in the intake. We also have a limit switch right here to reset our arm zero pause for our intake, and that's about it for the intake. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. So uh, let's start talking about this middleman, as you guys called it. Not a lot of teams have something like this. You know, they usually transfer directly to their deposits. So why did you guys go with a system like this? I'm sure it was a very conscious decision to do so. Right, so our middleman is very unique. We've gone through several iterations of it, but um, it's, it's made as this like stick kind of design to kind of just funnel the cones onto there reliably and we've gone through several revisions of it. It used to be like the outside shape of a cone to kind of land, the cone would land inside of it but it would fall fall out sometimes, it wouldn't mm -hmm. be reliable. So we switched from that and uh, ended up going to this kind of stick design so that you know, it lands on there more reliably. Yeah, so it looks like there's a bunch of little features going on here that we really got to talk about. So I see some springing going on here. Was that something right. that's always been there or a recent addition? How did that come about? So now with this middleman, we do need a spring so that it, you know, comes back to its position to put more cones onto it. But yes, we've had the spring. Now there's a huge spring on here because we needed more um, spring force pulling it forward um, so that cones wouldn't get stuck inside the robot. And so we just recently added this, but we have had the spring on this since we designed it. Yeah, and let's talk about these bearings. So was this something you originally designed it with or was it like you recognized a need for them and then added it? So we did have like a proof of principle kind of thing where it was some of these rounded channels kind of thing, mm -hmm. like this right here. So it used to be two of these side by side and of course they weren't bent. Um, and we had these bearings on that in that first design. And so yes, we did have bearings in the beginning and we did switch to something without bearings and realized that it did need it halfway through. Sure, yeah, no, that's fantastic. You know, evaluating your designs at every step is really, really important and you guys have done that super well and right. so now going on to your deposit walk me through it how does it work uh, and you know let's just get started with the hardware right so once we pass it through to our middleman we have a herringbone like claw right here it's driven by another axon so it'll grab onto this cone and it flips the 
middleman out of the way and extends. Wow. And so it's just a one motor lift. We don't have two motors, um, but it's very fast because we have counter springing on the outside here. So just like our arm is sprung on this side to counteract gravity, we have these surgical tubing on each stage of the slide so that it can pull it up a lot quicker every time we need it to go up because our motor has been struggling a little bit, but it's worked really well so far. Yeah, and so, you know, you guys are definitely a very experienced and veteran team. You've seen a lot of other teams this season run dual slides, right? One stack on either right. side. Obviously, you guys decided not to, so walk us through that. Why and, you know, how did it work out for you? So, during, like, the beginning of the season when kickoff started, we went through brainstorming of several different slide designs, and so we were thinking of doing, like, just an elevator. So, like, vertical slides was the first option. We could have done several other things, but we found angled slides is great because we can move a cone not only forward, but um, out. like out as well, yeah. So we can lift it up. At, it just gets to the junctions as quick as possible instead of having to go vertical and drive to that pole each time. So um, we just found it to be the quickest one for this design. Yeah, and so there was no need to have a second set of slides for like more stability or anything. You guys were able to achieve that with just one set? Right, and okay. it's lightweight as well. Yeah, each yeah. stage, Masumi slides are very light. 3D printed slide, uh, like those stages in between, mm -hmm. um, it's very lightweight. Yeah, of course. No, that's fantastic. And so now jumping in a little bit into your autonomous program, how do you deal with your active intake in your autonomous program picking off that cone stack? So one of the features we have are two color sensors on the bottom of the robot. Could you lift it up? Yeah. And what those do is those account for our X and Y position in autonomous. We also have just Roadrunner positioning, which helps us with this. Honestly, it's mostly just fine tuning. I see. And so, do you use your active intake to pick up the cone in autonomous? Yes, or we do. do. You, okay, got it. And so, you know, we've seen some other teams this season decide to have the active intake, but also add like a claw functionality to it. Was that something you guys ever considered, or it just wasn't needed? Honestly, looking back, I wish we had because during autonomous, it can sometimes be a pain to mm -hmm. have to pick it up with the active intake, especially if it gets caught on the wall. Mm -hmm. But honestly this has been working really well overall. Yeah, awesome. So now uh, another thing I want to talk about is how do you use your active intake to pick up cones that are fallen over? Does this give you any special capabilities or do you have a different mechanism for that? So the cool thing about our intake is that we don't need a separate mechanism to flip cones, but we can use our intake to basically, yeah, if you have a cone flipped around like about this way, mm -hmm. we can have the intake just drop down on top of it, and when it backs up, this cone will be pulled directly into the intake, and so we can pick it up just like that. Yeah, and that's using this uh, bumper you have on the front, or is using right. a different part? Okay. It Got just kind of pulls up into the wheels, and we have it ready to score. Yeah, awesome. And you, know, you guys are just so fluid throughout the match, so another thing I want to touch on is your game strategy overall. How do you decide where you're going to place, what you're going to do in a match? Um, yeah, and just walk me through that. Well, I've I've spent the whole year analyzing this game. I call this game's first chessboard because it's it's a bit of a headache, but I've, I've put together a list of several... Uh, strategies I've identified throughout the, the months. Pretty much openings and end games. It kind of varies a little bit. Um, and through that, we've been able to identify what strategies are good against other strategies, weaknesses, and things we can exploit. Normally, this, this year's game, you win more by not having an effective strategy, but by countering the enemy's strategy. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. And I think the last thing I want to touch on with your team is your guys' beacon. From my understanding, it's very, very unique in how it works, so why don't we just walk through it? Well, our beacon, uh, it's designed not only to, well, it's not designed to go over the top of it, but it actually has these doors on the front, which will we push onto the junctions, and then they're hooked so we can pull off of them again. And it just has a simple magnet and with a, a, uh, a hook at the top, so our intake will go down, we'll drive into it, it hooks on, and we push it onto a junction. Can you, can you hold that for me? Yeah. It push, we push it onto a junction, and then we can simply just move it it breaks off, go down. Yeah, so it'll kind of just lean back and break it off. Yeah, no, that's that's so impressive. And how has that been working out for you guys? Uh, you know, you've had three or four qualification matches under your belt at this point. What do you think? So it's been working fairly reliably. We just have to make sure that it's placed in the right orientation to be able to pick it up every time. But if it's placed correctly, we can usually grab it and put it on the pole very quickly. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Brown Coats, thank you so much. This interview has been great. There's just so much to talk about on this robot mechanically, the software land, and also with the game strategy and Beacon as well. So reporting for First Updates now, I'm Abbas, and this is Team 7842, the Broncos. 
This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.